Have you ever gotten kidnapped by a grade schooler? If the answer is no, which I hope it is, nice. If the answer is yes, what? What is up guys? It's your boy Idiot's Anime here back with yet another manga recommendation review video. And today's contestant is Imperfect Girl, a manga written by Niso Isin, the creator of the critically acclaimed Monogatari series and illustrated by Mitsuri Hatari. It was a dark, stormy, depressing night when I was in a voice chat with Diet Weeb and a few others in the Sensei Grand Fleet voice chat on Discord. And that's when Mr. Weeb on a diet said, Hey, yo, Eddie, you ever heard of Imperfect Girl? Me, not having heard of Imperfect Girl, replied, No, my good sir, I have not heard of the manga which is referred to as Imperfect Girl. That's when he said, Mm-hmm, it's a manga written by Nisio Isin. I immediately replied, Say no more, my good sir of culture. As we're both Nisio Isin, Monogatari enthusiasts, chads of the culture. And yeah, I bought all the volumes from Amazon, they came in the other day, and I read them. Finished it yesterday, shit was cool. Also, when I say written by the author of Monogatari, it's slightly clickbait. Not really, but it is. Because Nisio Isin is the original author of Imperfect Girl, the novel. The manga is technically retold by Mitsuri Hatari, but it's all based off the original novel. So it is still technically written by Nisio Isin, so shut up, don't even try and type the angry comment of, uh, durr, the manga wasn't written by him. Shut your goofy ass up. Talk about Nisio Isin ain't even write this. Get your ass out of here, man. But yeah, guys, I'm gonna do the use. I'm gonna give you guys the premise. Talk about what I like and don't like about the series, and then say whether it's readable or laughable. If you guys enjoy the readable or laughable series, then subscribe, because I plan on doing a lot more of these in the future. There are a lot of hidden gem manga that I want to review and let you guys in on. So let's get right into it. So when Imperfect Girl was delivered to my home, I stacked the books neatly on that shelf behind me and thought nothing of it. I just assumed that someday I would read them. Wasn't really planning on reading them immediately. Then that night, literally late as fuck as I was waiting for a video to export, I said, why not read the first chapter? So I read the first chapter, and then the second chapter, and then the third. And then I finished the first volume after reading nine chapters and realized I was not going to sleep that night. So yeah, needless to say, it was an engaging read. What is that? You want me to go more in depth and explain why it was so intriguing? Don't worry, broski. I got you. The story summed up nice and neat is basically this. The main character, who was not named till later, he just calls himself I, or Boku, I guess in the Japanese, who is not a novelist, not an author, but an aspiring author, someone who doesn't write novels, but makes attempts at writing them. Since the main character is somewhat a self-insert of Nisio Isin, it's kind of cool seeing his point of view of what a novelist is. He also goes on to say that the difference between an author and an aspiring author is that an author creates tells, but an aspiring author lies in nothing more. He tells the story in the past tense as now he is an author, saying he thinks that if not for meeting that girl, he would have never amounted to anything. You'll know what girl I'm talking about in a minute. One day our main character was biking when he saw two grade school girls crossing the street and a truck fucking rams into one of the girls and kills them. That's when he saw the other girl, whose friend just died, react in a way you would not expect someone, especially a child, to react to her friend dying. She looked down, made sure to save her video game, blank face, and then, only after saving her game, went and cried out for her friend. And it also happened that she looked back and realized that the main character saw her. He went on with his day and later on while he was sitting down at home, he felt a small prick in his calf. He looked down to realize the young girl from earlier was pushing a knife against his leg. This is also when she introduces herself as you. You, you, or you, you, I'm not sure. I'm just gonna say you. She kidnaps him at knife point and brings him to her house locking him in a closet and the whole story is him trying to figure out what made you this way why she acts this way in general while trying to escape the closet not gonna spoil whether he escapes or not if you want to find out read the goddamn manga but yeah you can kind of tell why i couldn't put down this manga another crazy thing about this story that i'm gonna be very vague about since it kind of spoils the story is that it's a mystery novel where the mystery could be solved immediately yet you choose to ignore the obvious signs as it's too painful to face head on. But yeah, since I've kind of explained the premise of like the first two chapters and don't really want to spoil anything else, I'm just going to get right into the technical side of things like art, characters, writing, and all that. First, we got the art. The art is nothing to complain about at all, and I think it definitely works wonders at expressing the novel's words in manga form. A lot of the time, you'll see a plethora of words all over the place, whether it be in the background or the foreground, kind of akin to when Monogatari has words pop up on the screen in the anime series. I do appreciate the manga author for doing this, 
as you can tell while reading this, this isn't the case of, oh, this novel's getting a manga adaptation. Let's just get some random person to do it. They're just gonna do a basic adaptation and not really put a spin or any flavor on it. This manga author's a goat. They literally read the novel, then requested to make the manga themselves. So you could tell that they had a lot of praise and love for the series and wanted to make it right in manga form. So they're goaded for all that and the way that they do the art. Good job. Characters. This story only really has two characters. Main character and you. Aspiring novel man and kidnapping game saving girl. Out of the two, I don't really have a main character. I love them both and their development throughout this short story. And like I said, I love how there's only two characters in pretty much the entire thing. It brings me back to Monogatari. Sorry to bring up Monogatari again, but I had to. But we already know Nisio Isan is capable of writing stuff with little characters because 90% of Monogatari episodes consist of two characters talking the entire time. But yeah, the characters are dope. I love everything we find out about you and I love how we see the main character go from where he was back then to how he is now. Development. The character and story development is crazy good, especially the mystery of what makes you act the way she does in the story. Not much else to say besides what I was already saying with the characters because there's not much development in the story. It's just development in the characters that makes development in the story. That's pretty much how it is. Nisio Yasin does this a lot, where his first foremost thoughts and priority isn't the story, but the characters. I'm pretty sure he even said in, a, in an interview, he doesn't write the story first or the circumstances in a story first. He writes the character first. He still learns new stuff about his characters and writes from that. Because he kind of explains it in a way where like he, he doesn't know everything about a character yet, even though he's the one who created them. Like he genuinely wants to know more about these characters. It's such a cool way of writing. But that's a little bit of a tangent. But yeah, like I said, the development is great. Pacing. The pacing of this story is quick yet concise, as it's only 27 chapters yet tells a more fulfilling story than a lot of manga with over 100 chapters. Literally, my only complaint about this manga is that it's short, and yet I yearn for more. Although the story is obviously written to be a length that works for the entire storyline, and it's done perfectly, it's just me being selfish. And this is also a 10th anniversary work for Nisio Eason's 10th anniversary of being a novelist, I believe, so of course it's not going to be like a super long story, it's just going to be a short thing. It's still done great though. It's done amazing. Don't get me wrong. Next, we got the writing. It's Nisio Isin. Must I say more? Really? You're actually gonna make me say more? Are you crazy? Are you dumb? Are you actually wacky? Man wrote Monogatari. Enough said. But nah, on the real, all jokes aside, the way this story is written to where it's a mystery novel that you can practically guess all the answers from the start is genius. And I genuinely did the same thing the main character did by ignoring the answers and the clues from the start. I was so immersed in the story and overall, just Nisio Isin's a go. I mean, I don't really have to explain more, do I? Also, I'm gonna add a new section of these reviews. I'm gonna add an enjoyment section because let's be real. You can recognize that a story, a manga, an anime, a novel, or anything is really good technically, but it might not be for you. So you might not enjoy it as much. So I'm just gonna start adding that to my reviews and say how much I enjoyed it. And overall, my enjoyment for Imperfect Girl was through the roof. I loved reading every second of it. I was looking forward to the next chapter. And overall, I left pretty happy about the ending. So is Imperfect Girl written by Nisio Isin and illustrated by Mitsuri Hattori readable or laughable? <laughs> You're really gonna make me answer that? Testing my patience, I see. <sighs> Laughable. Uh, yeah, man, I wasn't really feeling the story. It was kind of mid. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Of course, come on now. The story is very readable, very well done in a way that will make you not want to stop reading until you get all the answers. And I hope you guys do check it out. Now, I do want to make a little bit of a shift. I want to talk about spoilers because I just do. So time for spoilers now. So skip to this time on the screen if you don't want to be spoiled. I warned you, you've been warned. Now that the warnings have happened, I shall spoil. Okay, don't be mad if you haven't read it. I'm actually spoiling now. Bye if you haven't read it. If you if you have read it, keep watching. Her parents fucking died! OMG, that shit was such a good twist that was actually never a twist since it's fairly obvious, but you don't want to believe it, so you pretend that's not the case, but it actually is? God damn, bro. And you guys know, as I mentioned twice already, I legit fell for this like the main character did. It did come into the back of my mind like once or twice, but I dismissed it. And I'm not going to say I ignored it anymore. I I'm just going to re reword that. I was being hopeful and optimistic that it wasn't the case, but it was really obvious. And, and even though it's obvious, it still hits you when you find out you're like god damn and especially the whole reveal of how she was raised by these rules and that's why she does what she does with the whole saving the game or why she freaked out when he didn't say thank you for the meal i believe it was insanely good writing man nisio isin's gonna make me act up bro and then the very very end where i believe it's you being her, his new editor oh my god such a great ending i really hope that 
they're just great together in editing and making stories and stuff. And I'm just happy for both of them in the end. Of, at the end of the day, it was a great story. And that's what I gotta say for spoilers. I just really wanted to talk about those few things. Okay, now that spoilers are done, I really want to read the original novel. It doesn't have an English translation. Yes, the manga has an English translation, but the novel doesn't. And I'm kind of in the start of learning Japanese, so hopefully in a few years I'll be able to read it and understand all of it. Who knows, man? We'll get back to that in a few years. And speaking of reading more Nisio Isin, two things. One, if you would be so kind as to comment, please let me know your favorite Nisio Isin story. For me, I mean, y'all should know already, it's Monogatari. But I always find it interesting when people like his other works more. I don't know, I just like Monogatari so much, it's kind of crazy to see people like something else more. But it's still fair play, because like I said, Nisei Wiesen's goaded, everything he's he's written is pretty goaded. So I can understand why you'd like something like Kabikiri Cycle more or something. Eventually, I want to do a video where I rank all of Nisei Wiesen's works and adaptations. So, he, like, for example, a possible list could be this. This is just for reference, not my actual list, so don't get mad. Let's say this would be top, this would be bottom. Monogatari novel. Katana Atari anime, the Boku Yaku Tante live action, Medica Box, which is only in manga form. I lied, Medica Box is also an anime, but you know what I mean. Monogatari manga, then the Pretty Boy Detective Club novel. Just something like that, where like every single version, novel, manga, and anime in live action of everything that he's ever done. Does that make sense? I think that would be dope as fuck, but uh, of course this video would take years to make. I just want to know if you guys would want me to do that, because I am down. I'm down. And like I said, I, I, to do this properly, I would need a dedicated knowledge of the Japanese language to fully grasp his works, especially Monogatari. But that doesn't mean I'm going to give up. We'll get back to this in the future. Oh yeah, also two. Speaking of Bokiyaku Tante, has anyone read the manga on it? I want to read the novel first, and I think there's a fan translation of it, but it's not caught up. And I know there's a live action that apparently was actually good. Like, I know, like, the lead actress won awards and stuff. So I want to check out all three and make a video on that on its own as well. But if there's not, like, a novel translation or nothing, or even subs for the live action, I guess I'll just wait till I know Japanese, like I said. So, yeah. But yeah, that's really all I got for this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. I really hope you guys consider reading this manga. And like I said, it's just goaded. Nisio Isin, shout out the goat. Shout out Monogatari. Shout out my boys. Shout out everyone. <laughs> and yeah, that's that's really all I got, so subscribe, like the video if you enjoyed, check out my other manga reviews for more hidden gems, and as always, have a great day, just keep on vibing, peace.